Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Clarice Lim. Today I'm going to combine all the tenses that you have learned in all my videos into one slide so that you can see everything in one picture. It is very easy, it's very clear for you to see the relationship between all of them. Okay, of course, this is just tenses. There's many other grammar rules for you to learn. There's a lot of videos in my playlist in our YouTube channel for you to look through. Okay, so go ahead and see those videos over there for a lot of sample questions for you to try okay but this slide this video today aims to really combine everything together to give you a very overall view so that everything makes a lot of sense to you because tenses can be very very confusing to a lot of children even to adults they don't know how to use a lot of the tenses in English okay so today as you can see in my video is very very clear it is past present and future in fact in each of the timeline past present and future there are four tenses each Okay, so four tenses for present, four tenses for past, four tenses for future. So there's present, there is simple, present, continuous, present, perfect, and present, perfect, continuous. For the past, is simple, past, past, continuous, past, perfect, past, perfect, continuous. For future, is simple, future, future, continuous, future, perfect, future, perfect, continuous. As you can see, it's a pattern. It is the same thing for all three of them okay so now let's look take a look at each one of them and how they are different if you can notice in simple future in simple present okay i'll always go from present to past to future you see that all three has the word simple right okay so why is it simple because it is just the word itself if it's simple present it's just whether there is s or no s for simple past it's just the ed form for simple future it's just will or shall that you need to add in okay all right, so simple present, let's say, what are the, the, the rules, when is the time that you actually use them? So tenses is all about timing. So tenses, timing, in terms of present, so simple present, there is everything must be done at that moment, at the present. So it can happen, in fact, <coughs> in terms of present tense, in terms of the time, Let's see. So now it is a fact. It is happening. It is something that is going on. It is a fact. It must be simple present tense. The sun is bright. You cannot say the sun was bright. It should also be a habit, something that you do consistently like every week, every Monday, every Tuesday, every year. It will be I break a pen. It cannot be I broke a pen every week. Okay. So every time there is this time reference that it says that it is happening now at the present, you use simple present tense. And also also, another one will be if clause possible. What do I mean by if clause possible? Which means if the if clause says something that is likely to happen, it is very, very possible that it will happen. If you say if I score well for PSLE, okay, that is highly likely, right? PSLE is scoring well. I will get to go to Korea for holiday. But if you say something that is unlikely to happen, it is a if clause impossible, you will then use simple past tense. If clause impossible possible usually you use the word wish for anything that's if clause impossible for example i wish i had a bird which could fly me everywhere i wanted you notice that this is past tense and this is past tense and this is also past tense you have to use past tense for anything that you wish if clause that will not happen right so what about other times when you use simple past tense you use simple past tense when it's referring to a general time in the past right or it could be a past habit. So you notice just now, let's contrast this. This is a habit that you do every week and simple past is a past habit that you used to do every week. For example, I broke my toys every month in my childhood days, which is long time ago already. It's a past habit. So use simple past tense. So let's contrast again this two. So general time in the past, you use simple past tense time now okay you use simple present tense what about simple future when do you use the simple future tense you use it for when it is referring to anything that is in the future a general time in the future next month next year next week okay so general time in the future right Let's take a look at all these three again. Again, uh, so simple present tense, anything that's happening now is a fact, is a habit, if cross possible. Anything that has happened general time in the past, it will be simple past tense, past habit, if clause impossible. 
anything that's happening general time in the future you use simple future tense will or shall okay plus the verb in base form okay why when do you use will when do you use shall you use shall when it's we and i we shall i shall break the bond next month but if it's all other pronouns or all other nouns peter will break the bond he will break the bond Okay, so that's simple, simple, simple for you. Now we look at present continuous, past continuous, and future continuous. When do we use present continuous? We use present continuous when we are talking about anything that's happening now at a specific time. Why is the, what is the difference between simple present and present continuous? This is a general time in the present. It's a fact, it's a habit, it's an if clause possible. But present continuous talks about a specific time, which is now. How else do they represent now? They will use exclamation mark, they will use question mark, they will use a speech mark sometimes. They will also say the word please, for example, please open the door now. It will be open, it cannot be opened, right? So please, these clues will tell you that it is referring to a specific time now, right? Present continuous can also be used for future tense, okay? So there is another future tense, yes, there is another sim future continuous tense here, there is another simple future as well, but present continuous tense has got dual function. You can also refer to present continuous tense for things that's happening in the future. For example, they are breaking the stick tomorrow. So this is the only confused part um, for the tenses that can be used interchangeably. Present continuous can be used to refer to future and this is the only one that has dual function. Okay. Otherwise, in order to remember this, present continuous tense which takes the form of is, are or am plus the verb plus ing, you will use it for general time, a specific time in the present. Now, what about Past continuous. Past continuous will be when you use it for a specific time in the past, right? A specific time in the past, for example, is no longer just yesterday. If it's general time in the past, it's simple past. If it's specific time in the past, it's 8 p.m. yesterday, specific time, it will be was break for example. So was a word verb plus ing is past continuous time referring to a specific time in the past. I was breaking the news to her at 8 p.m. yesterday. If you remove the word 8 p.m., it will become I broke the news to her yesterday. Now you see the difference? General time in the past, simple past tense. Specific time in the past, past continuous. What about when you have two actions going on at the same time in the past? I was breaking the news to her when the rain was pouring. So this is also talking about two actions happening at the same time. You see, the moment there is a specific time mentioned, you use past continuous tense. So what about when, while, wow, and as? Why do I highlight this? Because when, while, wow, and as gives you a specific time the action happened in the past. So whenever you see when, while, and as in a sentence, you straight away know it's past continuous tense. I was breaking the news to her when he walked in, while he was walking in, as he was walking in. Okay. So when, while, and as is always used to give you a specific time in the past. So I always tell the students the moment you see when, while, and as, you know past continuous tense. And whenever you use past continuous tense, the other tense is usually either another past continuous tense or past tense, a simple past tense. So I always tell them the best friend of past continuous tense, simple past tense. Okay? So when do you then use future continuous tense? Future continuous tense will be when it is a specific time in the future. Okay, let's revise again. Huh? So a specific time in the present is present continuous. A specific time in the past is past continuous. A specific time in the future will therefore be future continuous tense. So he will be breaking the bond on Monday during the meeting. Exactly when? On Monday during the meeting. So how does future continuous tense look like? Future tense is always will or shall, okay? So shall is we and I for will or uh, will will be for our other pronouns or now. So I repeatedly write it over here. So he will be breaking. So how does future continuous tense look like? It will always be will or shall be plus verb plus ing. Okay, if you want more details, 
look for my video on future continuous tense then you will see the pattern coming out okay on how to use them in each sentences all right so now you see the pattern and now we look at the next one is present perfect tense okay so there's present perfect tense there's past perfect tense there's future perfect tense when do you use each one again so this is present right so if it's present it will mean that it is something but it is perfect perfect means has or have plus the verb plus en form correct has or have means it's already done but for present perfect tense it is something that is already done but you do not know when usually they will come with the word just already yet ever never for since okay these words will tell you that the action is already done but it, it is not a specific time given to you but the only thing that you know is it's already done for example i have done my homework Okay, so you can imagine the word already is behind the sentence, but I can omit it, but I will still need to use present perfect tense because it is an action that is done, but time unknown. Okay, so for another example, since I have broken the record, I will receive a medal. So it is something that is already done, I have broken. Do you know when's the time? No, I do not know when it is already done. That's all I know. So I always tell the students, the moment you see the words just already, yet, ever, never, for, since, in fact, I make them sing it in class, make them memorize it, because these keywords are very important. It tells you what the answer is exactly. The answer, let's say this is a blank, okay? Since I broke, since I had broken, since I am breaking, since I have broken, which one do you choose? Because of the word since, you use have broken the record, okay? So that's when you use present perfect tense. Action is done, time is unknown. The clue, just already yet, yeah, ever, never, for, since. Okay, so when do you use past perfect tense then? Past perfect tense is used when it is an action that is completed and there's two actions in comparison in the sentence, okay? So you know exactly when this happened. Just now that one present perfect tense is when you do not know when it happened, Past perfect tense, you know exactly when it happened. In fact, it happened first before another action. So the child had broken the toy even before started playing. Okay, before he even started playing. So the toy had already broken, right? Therefore, you say, okay, there's two actions here. The toy broke before the child played. Okay, so the, the toy had broken. It happened first. So you put had for the break, for the action over there, even before the child started playing. So that's the second action. So the action that is done first, use past perfect. Another time when you use past perfect will be in indirect speech, which means you are reporting what the other person had said. So they said, whatever that is said, they cried, they screamed, they shouted, they had broken the toy. Okay, so as long as it is a past tense that is in the speech, you report it using past perfect tense. Okay, let's recall again. Present perfect tense, you use it when it is an action done but time unknown. Past perfect tense is when you, you use it when there's two actions, you know exactly that one of them is already done. If not, you are reporting an action that is already done. Then when do we use future perfect tense then? We use future perfect tense when it is something that is done in the future. Okay, are you getting the pattern already? So it's always the same thing, it's just a time reference, a time difference, okay? So this is already done, they will have broken their bonds by next year. By next year is the time in the future and it is an action completed in the future. They will have broken it next year. So how do you use future perfect tense? How does it look like? It will be shall or will plus have plus the verb in the en participle in the past participle, sometimes en, sometimes ed, okay? So it will be, we and I is for shall, all other pronouns or nouns, David will have broken his bond, or he will have broken his bond, but if it's I, it will be, I shall have broken my bond, okay? So that is how you use perfect tense, okay? Revise again, huh? present perfect, time unknown, past perfect, Two actions, time you already know because one of them is completed first. If not, we are reporting the speech. Future perfect, time known, it is in the future. Okay, so this tree is to describe action that is already done. And now we look at the present perfect continuous tense. Present perfect continuous tense, you use it for things that is going on over a period of time. Okay, to contrast the tree, Present perfect continuous is for things that is going on over a period of time and still going on. 
for example the children have been breaking the pinata since 30 minutes ago perhaps we should stop the game now what does that tell you it's still going on and there is a period of time since 30 minutes ago and they're still playing right so that is the present perfect continuous action has been going on for a period of time okay so how do we contrast that to the next one the past perfect continuous so the past perfect continuous will be action going on for a period of time but completed okay so recall again present perfect continuous is action going on for a period of time still going on past perfect continuous action going on for a period of time but completed in this case we had been breaking the pinata for two hours before the party ended so the pinata is no longer being broken it is already ended the party has already ended therefore you use had plus been plus verb plus ing just now present perfect continuous is you must use has and have plus been plus verb plus ing that's the difference okay what about future perfect continuous so future perfect continuous will be shall and will plus have plus been plus verb plus ing okay so again there must be a period of time and action completed in the future yes you're getting it already so that's the pattern isn't it present perfect continuous going on for a period of time not completed past perfect continuous action going on for a period of time completed future perfect continuous action going on for a period of time to be completed in the future so over here they will have been breaking records for consecutively three years by next year so this is the period of time they have been doing it since last year this year they're breaking record again if it's by next year they will have broken it three times in a row right so this is the action that's being done three over a period of time to be completed in the future okay so now let's take a look again this is the whole grammar map the whole tenses map for you i hope this is very clear for you if you want to have detailed explanation for each one of them on how to use it in sentences or how to answer grammar mcq please go to my youtube channel and look through all the english playlists every single tense described here is there in individual videos of about five minutes each okay go and try them go and look at them subscribe to our youtube channel so that you can have more lessons on English okay hope to see you soon thank you so much bye bye